Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where all friends and fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally agree, and discuss a musical artist. Some upcoming artists we're doing are the Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, Tool, Quicksand. So give us a like, subscribe. Um, but with me today, we have... Shoot, I don't, there's not enough songs to go around here for names. We got Tim Colquitt and Ed. And he's free as a bird. That's Jason. Yeah, you could just pick any Beatles song. That's real really. love right there. <laughs> he's a paperback writer. He's Eduardo. And he's just sleeping. It's Colquitt. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so today. Or he's only sleeping. One of the two, yeah. <laughs> the last Beatles song came out. We haven't covered the Beatles yet on this show, but eventually we will get to the Beatles. We we'll get to the Beatles. Yeah, definitely. I mean, is it the last Beatles song though? Like for real? Because I don't know, man. I, I, well, I that's what they're advertising. Else. Well, you know, Elton John said it was going to be his final tour like ten years ago, and this has been on their. He's final still tour saying this is his final tour, yeah. so I don't know. I don't know what uh, the British. Motley Crue signed a contract in blood or whatever saying they'd never tour again. And they're on tour. All right. Well, let me rephrase it. We got a new Beatles song today called Now and Then. So we also got a new Green Day song today, but. uh, Different video. Yeah. Pass that one up. Um, That's a great song, though. So. Tim, why don't you start us off now and then? What's your thoughts? Well, there there's things about it I like. There's things about it I don't like. Um, obviously, it's brand new. Um, there's a lot to soak in. It's obviously a pretty important release. So, um, yeah, I like the melody a lot. And I like the production. Sounds great. Like, it's really clean what they did with the vocals and um and it's mixed fairly well uh i could you could have used a little more george overall though yeah. yeah um and even the solo is played by paul yeah um so yeah uh, the little bit of guitar i heard in there that like could have actually been george i would have liked to have heard a little higher up in the mix That's just personal stuff, though, on day one. Um, There's also, and I did go back and listen to Free as a Bird in Real Love as well. Um, And this kind of, they all kind of fit in the same tempo. Um, And then out of the three, I think where I'm landing right now is of those three, This one is the least interesting, but it's not bad. But the other ones like very clearly have a George influence. And even on the vocal melodies here, um, there's no George and it it, it's lacking something. Uh, I do really like the the string arrangement. I think that's really cool. I would have liked a, a a bridge or something, though. I don't know. It, it's uh, there's a lot to take in. It's probably my third pick as well out of those three songs. Like "Free as a Bird" is just. I mean, I remember when that came out. It was like a like the the family sat on the couch and watched that <laughs> anthology when it came out. You know, it was a big deal. But indeed it was. And, uh, to, to say that great minds think alike, Tim, um, if you listen to the original demo, uh, John Lennon did have a bridge on there. Okay. The put it on the final. Minute. Well, so, I have not heard the original he, he demo. Didn't, he, yet, so. Well, he, he didn't put words to it. He like did it, did it. He like humbled. Like he like, no, humble. He mumbled. Uh, sure. He mumbled. Humbled, but, but I he, can't imagine he John a, ever he, being humble. <laughs> no, that's so true. you can hear but that. He you it. can hear that same problem on "Free as a Bird" when George starts singing. They had another musical part; they just didn't have words, so they made it work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it d- it definitely sounds like a demo from John. Um, the, uh, one more part would have been it would have felt a little more complete, I think. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I agree. What about you, Cole? Quit. I liked it. I thought it was really good. <laughs> I, I had no complaints, actually. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess a bridge would be nice, and I would love to hear more George. But, I mean, I wasn't really expecting to hear a new Beatles song anyway. So, for me, I'm just like, it's still pretty awesome. Like, and Tim's right. That string arrangement is dope. Like, I think it it sounds a little, like, dissonant, I guess. Like, because the vocal definitely sounds like at least John's part sounds definitely like it's a demo, but then everything else around it is very kind of pristine and and not, I guess the piano sounds a little demo y too. I don't know. It sounds like they cleaned it up a lot, but it definitely cleaned it up. There's no tape hiss on it or anything. Yeah. yeah it's super, it's super uh, surgical, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, I need some, of but I, I, it still made me feel something, which is, how I judge whether I like something or not. And it, I heard it and I enjoyed it immensely and I, it made me feel things and that's uh, pretty awesome. And uh, glad, glad it exists. I need some of that uh, Peter Jackson technology so I can isolate my cat's vocals out of our video. <laughs> and just replace us with your cat. Yeah. <laughs> What if AI created a, a, a George guitar solo and mix it in? Yeah, I'll take that. I mean, all they had to do was bring them up in the mix a little bit on the yeah. guitar, and that could have solved a bunch. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It is not guitar heavy at all. It's super piano and string. Like, it kind of reminded me of, uh, and y'all hate this, but I enjoy it, uh, the last Radiohead record, um, Moonshape pool because it's very piano and string oriented more so than anything else, and uh, it kind of has that vibe to it. I might like that. I haven't heard that album yet. Oh, dude, it's so depressing. I mean, there's a lot of weird synthy <laughs> avant garde shit too, but uh, I mean, there's plenty of like like there's a couple songs on there that even I'm like, all right, guys, you, you I get it. You're 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 trying really hard, and I appreciate that. But come on. Like it's got a couple of those Radiohead moments on it, but anyway, whatever. Uh, when you, when you guys awesome. were talking in the uh, Facebook, and, and Tim said, "Oh yeah, it's out now. It's on Amazon." I was like, "What?" I went to Spotify and I saw it, and I had it queued up. And then I had to sit in a work meeting. I'm just sitting there like, "Come on!" I was like, "Have you guys heard the new Beatles yet?" On the work call, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> like, yeah, show. kids. Don't yeah, is there the promotion for this hasn't been much, honestly. Yeah, they they kind of kept it kind of quiet. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. It might be that we're all in our own bubbles and we don't notice it. But like, I mean, my stepdad's a huge Beatles fan and he knew it was it was existed and he called and talked to me about it and stuff. So like there is I mean, people that aren't on the Internet all the time at least knew it existed and heard it somehow. So maybe there is promotion happening and we just didn't see it. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. Obviously. But even then, like, is there a physical release? Do we know of? Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know about that. There's a there four, is. There, they got multicolored 45s of this with the two, mm-hmm. you know, two singles. Okay. And then they have, they're redoing the blue and the red albums, and they're oh, adding, yeah, they're triple disc each. What? They're adding a bunch of extra songs on it, but not free as a bird in real love, which is. Well, and I was thinking, because I did go back and listen to those, and I think the three of those songs, uh, you know, with this and those two, uh, would work really well. Put that out, like, as a 10-inch or something, I'd buy that with all three of them. It's an interesting interesting session, you know, 30 years apart, but... (laughs) I I texted a link to my mom. 50 years apart. When I first heard it, like I got, I got chills. I got goosebumps. Like it's, it's a new Beatles song. Yeah. Um, I sent it to my mom, and then I called her later on, and she was, she was crying. She was just, just shocked or you know, emotional about it. Yeah. So, well, one one thing that this song definitely reminded me of is uh, just how awesome of a songwriter John Lennon was. Even his uh, incomplete demos, like there's something there that's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, the dude could write a melody. I mean, both yeah. of them, all of them can. Yeah, and just uh, an amazing voice that it just hooks you immediately. So Ringo's drumming sounded great on it. Yeah, yeah, it did. Mm-hmm. What about you, Ed? Um, well, the I think Tim and, uh, and Will said it pretty much a lot, but um, I gotta say, like one thing that I really appreciated about this single is like it sounds vintage. And that is something, it has a sound that you don't really hear much anymore. Uh, going to Tim's point about John's, Lennon's songwriting ability, you know, and melody writing. And it's just, you don't, you don't really hear that kind of, uh, that kind of, like a lot of song, singer songwriters do it, but it's just not the same touch. And I think that's why the Beatles are so special to a lot of people. Not everybody, not everybody likes the Beatles, but I like the people that I know that like them. I think mean, John Lennon is just, part of the secret of that formula you know and um he's he's always been my favorite uh, i like his lo-fi approach to music the sound is very lo-fi like his like his stuff even like you like lucy in the sky with diamonds you know like it has that psychedelic kind of uh like will was saying with the piano and the keys and and all of that so that, that i like that sound paul I, I like obviously like him too you know he's a great musician but I was more attracted to John's style of music. I always find him more interesting, uh, more willing to explore, right? And uh, his voice also is very unique. So I, I really, I really, really liked every, every, like the string arrangement, the melody. The I think Tim has a good point. It needed a bridge. It needed something else. I don't know about George. I didn't put in more George in here. This is because mainly because I, I, I don't know. From my opinion, like this being a John John song, I think, and they might have wanted to put him more in the front. I think George having a George guitar part, obviously, completing the band, but I think they did I think they did that song justice. It sounds great. I've been listening to it all day. I love to hear John's vocals sound so clear. But I think the vintage sound of this song is what makes it special. It sounds something that literally like it sounds from the seventies, like his voice, at least like it, it just sounds like where, when it was recorded, everything else around it. Obviously <laughs> not, that is like, when it was recorded. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's what I'm saying. It sounds like that time, you know, I, I, the production to me doesn't sound like it was recorded. You know, the full band, it sounds more, it sounds closer to what they did in the 90s at Paul's studio to me it, it definitely um you can definitely hear the digital on it yeah as opposed to something that was recorded in the 70s that had no you digital you really you really have to you really have to listen to hear it though it's not they oh, did sure, a good yeah, job it's, of it's, covering it up yeah and, it's, it's and, not yeah. like blunt like you know yeah and and being a musician myself like that's just one of the things that it's part of my criteria for music. That is something I'm listening for. Um, I, cause I'm curious. I want to know how things are recorded. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. so I love watching documentaries and stuff and being in studios and there's a lot to learn. And obviously the, you know, the Beatles are like ground zero for learning a lot of that. And, uh, you know, as you guys know, they created a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And so, it's interesting to see that in the digital world, especially, you know, that we're pretty deep into it at this point. And, and while, yes, it's still able to retain the analog qualities, because, like, the drums aren't processed, like, every, like 99.9% of yeah. music today. Uh, there's no like weird synth sounds or anything. There's yeah. no like uh, MIDI going on or anything like it's all analog instruments. Yeah. Um, just manipulated digitally. Yeah. Yeah. I think and Paul's bass riff is really good too. Paul's Simple bass riff is really yeah, good. The, yeah, the, 12, the 12 minute video that they came out with, it has like a clip of the bass line that he mm-hmm. does. And I, I didn't pay, cl- when I first heard the song, I didn't really pay that close attention to the bass, but then I saw the clip and I was like, wow, that is, that is really cool. <laughs> like, um, 
Uh, just the little flare that he does the, uh, in there. It's a little riff that he has for the bass line is really neat. But going back even to uh, Free as a Bird and Real Love, even compared to those two, this feels a lot more subdued with the fills. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's a nice, simple little melody that they uh, they did pretty good with what they had to work with. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, if I was to, like, rank it, if I had to rank, like, the Beatles album for songs... This wouldn't be on the playlist. No, it wouldn't be on the playlist. But no. it's it's still like, I mean, it probably might be in the top seven, you know, top songs of 2023. You know, well, it's a Beatles sure. song. It could, yeah. That's a possibility. So it, it's been a crazy year. I cannot believe we cut a Rolling Stones record. A, a Beatles, Beatles song. song. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I just, I, I love that, that no matter what happens, like, Rolling Stones put out a whole new record and Beatles are like, yeah, well, fuck you. Well, Here's a new song. Yeah, right. They do that. They, we you raise know. you uh, one dead member yeah. and go to two. The Beatles have always kind of like encroached on the Stones whenever there was a one there. They did a record release. I can't remember if it was Beggars or Exile. And Paul showed up with a copy of um, Hey Jude and like just <laughs> stole the show with that you know, version of Hey Jude before it was out. I want to say the anthology kind of approached on Voodoo Lounge too. A little bit, yeah. Because they were, yeah. the Stones were like on MTV. They they had like a great comeback after the 80s. And uh, here come the Beatles. Hey, <laughs> going to put out two new songs. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, well, uh, we'll get to that video, I but I, I think. I think that uh, you'll find that the Beatles or the Stones never actually went anywhere in the '80s. They consistently had hits. They did. It was I mean, just start me up from the '80s. So yeah, um, uh, and yeah, that song's still everywhere. Yeah, I, think, I mean these kind of bands Microsoft. don't really need. What was that? These these kind of bands don't really need another hit per se. You know, they are they are, they're already set and. Well, they're the not DNA writing the right hits, they're writing the right music. Exactly. They're not, they don't, I don't think they're caring about making hits. They're just trying to, you know, be. I mean, there's relevant. definitely a, uh, a, a stab of nostalgia in this too, like, clearly, because this is mm -hmm. revisiting old material. Yeah. I mean, you know, going to, going to, going to Ed's point, they're not necessarily writing new music. They're just they're working on projects. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, they, they don't need. I mean, everybody knows who the Beatles are, you know. They, they but it, they're well, just yeah, trying exactly. to put stuff out there, you know, keep them going, keep the algorithms going. Sure, but I mean, you could argue that that was even unnecessary. It's the Beatles; yeah. <laughs> they're not going anywhere. Um, and I, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool release. You can tell um, in that documentary it was eating at Paul. Yeah, yeah his a little demo bit. was laying around like it's been eating him for thirty years or so. <laughs> we got to We can finally do it. Yeah, yeah, and they did a great job with it, man. I, I don't, I don't see any reason why they should have held on to this if they could. Peter Jackson, I didn't all that stuff about Peter Jackson. I didn't know that the, that technology was out there and they could do it either. Have you seen that get back? Get back. I did watch this back. That was, yeah, that was awesome. I really enjoyed, and I also saw the one. I think it was on Hulu. It was Paul and um, Rick Rubin. Um, there's a three episode one. That was really that one was really cool too. Yeah, that's just like an interview thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you guys listen to the Twenty Three? Love me do. Yeah, yeah. I have not. Was that their first hit? Yeah. Yeah, that was their first. Let me do. It's kind of cool. Yeah, is that why they did it? You know, their last song and their first song kind of thing. Makes. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. I mean, it is called "Now and Then." After yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah, and that makes that that tracks. The forty-five has both. Oh, first and last. Yeah, that there makes sense. Yeah. 
book into just about it. Another book in the making, like uh, the Rolling Stone Blues. Yeah, man, which is pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, but no other band that's come out of that England or that area has. And I'm telling you, John is this is he was John and Paul had magic together, man. Like everything that they did. Um, you can put Ringo and George in there too, but most of the I think the band, from what I've read, you know, was started by John. So, have you heard of he Tootin' a Snore down, right? in '74? Yeah. Huh? Have you heard of Tootin' a Snore in '74? That might that might counter your uh, claim there. That that's one that John and Paul did that is probably not up to par. <laughs> Teddy Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's that too. I like Teddy Boy though. I share a birthday with George, so uh, I he's always been my favorite just because of that. I've always been a John guy. Yeah, he was the most dangerous one, I think. Paul was the pretty one, right? I think I remember seeing that in the movie. Paul was the pretty one. John was the dangerous I think one. I think he was technically the cute one. Yeah. And then George was the quiet one. Quiet one. And Ringo, and Ringo was Ringo. Yeah, and Ringo was Ringo. the drummer. <laughs> I don't know. The spice I don't know. I, 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 did, get, I, I did missed that day in class. So. All right. So, yeah, we, we're not going to do like now a gaslight answer and, then, you know? and ramble on about stuff. Oh, Jason, no, you haven't given us your opinion. I mean, you talked a lot about it. What do you think? I, I hated it. It sucked. Are we going to give it a number? <laughs> You want to give it a, a one to ten? No, I mean it. It was like I said. It gave me chills when I heard it. Um, John sounded amazing. Really liked Ringo. Ringo's drum sound. I, I'll talk. They more do about sound Ringo. like drums. I'll talk about Ringo more when we do the full discography. But um, that I, I guarantee you, when we do the Beatles, it'll take longer than we do the Stones. Yeah, because we'll have a lot more to talk about. I think just because I think the Beatles are a better band personally, but you know, whatever. They just explored more the stones. Well, anyways, but yeah, I, in my opinion, they, they explored more than the stones. The stones, by the stones? They experimented too. <laughs> yeah. yeah I don't know. I mean, the Beatles were creating recording stuff like in Abbey road. They had to create things to make things happen. It's, it's just a different ballpark, man. You can't. Uh, yeah. I feel like, I don't, I don't think I feel like the Beatles that when they took risks, they still did really good things with those risks. Oh, and I feel I'm like some of the Stone songs Rolling that are Stones. risky, I'm like, yeah, you know, you tried, and it was okay. I'm 100 <laughs> percent in the Beatles camp. I grew up yeah. listening to Abbey Road and the White Album. Actually, yeah, we got some good memories listening to the Sergeant Pepper in your room playing Firefox. Is it not Firefox? What's it called? Star Fox. Video game? Star Fox. Yeah, the original White Album. And then the 2009 pressing. One's white. One is mother of pearl. <laughs> Very cool. But, yeah. I have the uh, original 45 for yesterday. That's my, my that's my favorite song. Um, I think I've got some 45. But I have somewhere yeah. around here. I'm probably yeah. going to buy this, though. It's like, I'm going to have to, you know? But yeah, I definitely want the, uh, the the red and the blue albums were like my I had those on CD. They were like some of my first Beatles. That yeah, I same. Those those were the two that I cut my teeth on. Were those yeah. two? So I, I never really finish. listened to the red one. I was more of a blue album one. Oh yeah, I mean the blue. The one red one I hardly listened to. Yeah, the blue one had the, you know the good stuff, the great stuff. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and then yeah, the one I, I remember remember the one album. And I'm glad they put it I out. remember the one album. Yep. I didn't bother with it. This is legit. Yeah, it was uh I, I worked at City Warehouse when that came out and it was literally number one for like forever. It was oh. it was up and it, and all the songs are number ones too. That was the thing because Elvis put out two of them. He had it, like a compilation where every song was a number one hit and he called it number one. So the Beatles did it. And then Elvis, uh, you know, the estate put out uh, number two or whatever. And it was all songs that had made it to at least number two. <laughs> <laughs> and it had a number one hit on there. That was the one with that, uh, the little less conversation. 
Oh, that yeah, was yeah, an yeah. actual hit in the 2000s. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah, but the Beatles had the red and the blue album. That's like two double albums of hits, you know? Yeah. yeah. It might not all have been number one. I just really, I, I really, I really wish that they would have, they, they would have put uh, Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane on Sgt. Pepper's. I really wish they would have done that. That would have made Sgt. Pepper. And I think that George Martin Ooh. said that too. We'll talk that would have made Sergeant Pepper's tour. so awesome just to have those those two songs. Just move them over. Put There's a lot of record. good stuff on, on on tour. I'm not saying there isn't. Then, I'm but, not saying there isn't. Put, is a great record. But then they could have put had those never two knows songs on, on that one. Right. So like I was saying, perfect. we're not going to do like the Gaslight Anthem video and go off on a tangent here. We're here to talk about now and then. We all love <laughs> it. Please like, share, subscribe. And we'll eventually do the whole Beatles catalog, and then we'll talk about. Were we doing numbers for this? It's a ten. I mean, what else is there? Eight point two. Nine point five. A ten. So it rounds up to ten. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do the math, but I'm lazy. And <laughs> I did it for what you. What was it? Eight point five. Eight point two. Oh, okay. <laughs> 8.2? That's a slap right there. Revive the Dead Man. You're going to give him an 8.2 tune? It could go on, but that's where I'm at right now. Average is a 9.4. That's a slap button right there. I think it's better than average, but not by much. Whenever vocals make you weep, that's a 10. Well, it didn't make me weep today. (laughs) So what can I say? Eight so and call hearted. You call hearted, Tim. You're yeah, just I, I emo. Think, I, think, I think he gets the slap button. Anything lower than a nine gets a slap. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that everyone fair. deserves I, a I slap I, now and I, then. That's a perfectly good score, and I appreciate and respect you. Man, you on the wrong show if you think we respect each other here. <laughs> you know what? Anything hey, below we a ten gets a slap. Agree. Now. That's a double slap. <laughs> Well, I'm it is sorry. weird. Maybe I'm not just... gonna lie. Like seriously, I get kind of a little bit angry when I'm, and not everybody has the right to their own choice. But when people tell me they don't like the Beatles, I do get a little angry. Like a little anger creeps inside of my heart, and I'm, I'm I like, I try to understand them, but I'm like, I don't understand. Yeah, this is like, this why? is how you handle that. Because I used to be like that, and this is how I got over that anger. You just yeah. in your mind, you say, "Okay, I'm not gonna trust anything you have or respect any musical opinions you have whatsoever <laughs> forever." Man. You are now done. I mean, that's basically the show. <laughs> well, it was 20 uh, minutes uh, ago. But <laughs> yeah. Be safe. Make good decisions. Mm-hmm.